for these these few pages, um, work is forced some distance, but it's only forced some distance if the force is constant and it's in the direction of the distance. Uh, so um, it's really integral f dotted with dr or integral f ds. And so these pages kind of show you, all right, in this instant, the integral f dotted with dr comes out to p cosine alpha times l. So now, if you have a constant force, we don't have to do integral f dr. We can just say that the work done by constant force is, and don't memorize p cosine theta l. What that p cosine theta l is really telling you is you take the component of the force that's in the direction of the l, in the direction of the distance, and multiply it times the distance. Okay? So if you see a constant force on your problem, and you want to calculate the work done by that constant force, it's the component of force, it's in the direction of the distance, times the distance. But you already knew that. You already knew that. And so with this one, you can look at the kind of derivation of why the integral of f dotted with dr comes out to 1 half kx, 1 squared minus x, 2 squared. So that's the work done by a spring. So if you have a spring in your problem, and you want to find the work done, don't have to do integral f dot of dr, you can just say 1 half a x 1 squared minus x 2 squared. Be careful of those x's, not the length of the spring, the stretch of the spring or compression. Does it matter whether it's being stretched or compressed? Not exactly. The, uh, in general, um, a stretch is a positive delta x, a compression is a negative delta x, but we're, we're squaring them. So it really doesn't matter if it's a compression or a stretch. <clears throat> you take that stretch or compression, square it, minus the final stretch or compression, squared. Gravity, uh, mg. I like h1 minus h2. I think the book and maybe the formula sheet says y1 minus y2, um, but it's just the height. Y1 minus Y2, the height of the mass initially minus the height of the mass final. You know, the height of the mass position one minus the height of the mass position two. Now, this G right here is just the magnitude of G. Don't plug in another negative. The way it was derived, it, we already knew it was down. So that equation knows gravity is pointed down so and we'll do problems obviously uh don't plug in negative 9.81 for that g that's just magnitude 9.81 or 32.2 also the way this is derived positive is up so sometimes you can choose your own axes not with that formula with this formula we we ch already chose positive going up all right, and um, and we know that that leads to the sum of all the work done leads to change in kinetic energy. Um, a few more things on the next page, which this is filled out nicely for you, so you can tear out the old pages, put in the the new pages. Um, <clears throat> work there, there's kind of two ways we can we can calculate work power. Sorry, there's two ways we can calculate power. Either just take the total work divided by the time. And that would be power. Or uh, you can see if this is F dotted with dr and we kind of divided by dt. Uh, I don't know if you knew, I don't think I really knew this or used this very much, but the power is also the force dotted with the velocity. Especially if the force is constant and the velocity is in the same direction as the force, uh, you can actually take the force times the velocity. And that will equal your uh, power. And then efficiency, you probably do this in thermo and other, other classes, but efficiency is output over input, right? Efficiency is output over input. If you've got a motor that is not very efficient, you've got to put in a lot of power into the motor just for the motor to do the amount of work you want it to do. If you want it to do 100 watts of real work, you might have to put in 120 or something, uh, depending on how efficient it is. Uh, there is one typo in the uh, notes I, I gave to you. This, this one right here, the advantage 
advantages of the work energy method. This is the new chapter 14. That should say chapter 14 versus chapter 13. I didn't uh, fix that before I printed it off. Uh, but what are the advantages? The main thing is this method has velocity in the equation. This method leads us straight to the velocity. As opposed to free body diagrams, lead us to the acceleration, and then we take that acceleration and find block. We would get the same velocity, we'd get the same answer, uh, but work energy leads straight to velocity. Uh, and then the other is that you don't have to worry about forces that don't do work, especially normal forces. Normal forces never push it. Uh, that distance, right? The normal force is never in the direction of the displacement. Uh, so you, sometimes you don't have to calculate normal forces. Um, you only have to worry about forces that do work. 